Hello guys and welcome back to the second part of this series and in this video we will cover the remaining part. So this is where we left off in the first video. So in this video we will learn how we can move this bar and change the opacity of the hidden text. So back in my main.js file, the first thing that I am going to do is create a new event listener. So here I am going to write document.addEventListener and the event is DOM content loaded. So once the DOM content is loaded then only we will execute our javascript. Now inside this the first thing that we need to do is to get access to our DOM elements. So for that I am just copying that code here. So first thing that we need is our bar so I am using get element by id. And then we have this hidden text so this will return an array of uh, elements for all the h, i and double d, e and n. Now inside it I will create a new function I will call this drag element and pass my bar as a argument so I will define the function drag element here and the parameter it takes is element now inside this the first thing that I will do is define a few variables so the first variable that I am going to define is I am calling this one dist for distance and then current pause for current position and I am setting both of these to zero now what I will do next is add some event listener so once we click on the element we will trigger this event that is on mouse down and for that I will use the function drag mouse down so I will define that drag mouse down function here and it takes as parameter the event so the first thing that we need to do is prevent any default behavior so for that I am going to call e.preventDefault now here I will initialize my current position to e.clientX so basically this client has gives us the horizontal co coordinate for the wrapping div so I will define what this client X do in a moment now the next thing that I am doing is for document.onMouseUp I will uh, use this function close drag element and then for the event on mouse move I will call element drag so these two function we need to define so first I will define close drag element so what this is doing is basically uh, once we have dragged the element and have lifted the mouse then this function will be called so inside this close drag element I will simply uh, set my existing events to null so document.onMouseUp will be set to null and then document.onMouseMove will also be set to null now the next thing that we need to define is our function that is the element drag function so inside this function we will have the logic so now let's define this element drag function here so I will call this function element drag and this will also take as parameter the event so I will call e.preventDefault to prevent any default behavior now inside this what we need to do is use these variables so I will calculate the distance so this will tell us by how many pixels we have dragged the element so for this what we will do is use the current position and subtract it by e.clientX so what this e.clientX do is let me show you here so you can head on to this website for more details so clientX gives us the horizontal coordinate as you can see on the leftmost side we have the clientX 0 and on the rightmost side we will have the value of the container width so based on the container the client text will give us the horizontal coordinate now by subtracting it we are basically getting the previous position minus the current position because initially we had defined current position to e dot client x so this holds the older value and here we subtract it to get the current value of how many pixels we have moved now we, we also need to set the current position to e dot client x so now the current position will hold this value and when the next time this function gets called the current position will be holding the previous value and e.clientX will be holding the current value so we will get the distance now we can create another variable here and I am calling this update pause for updated position and here what I will do is I will take the element dot offset left so this will gives us how many pixels we are from the left this element is from the left and we will subtract it uh, with our distance value the distance will tell us how many pixels we have moved and I am subtracting it because the distance is a negative value now we can set element dot style dot left is equal to our updated position 
and also don't forget to append the px for the pixel otherwise we won't get the value now let's save this and have a look whether the element is moving or not so now as you can see it is still not moving and that is because I made a mistake here so let me just fix it so uh, actually it is not pause one it is distance so we will subtract it by the updated distance value so now let's save this one and have a look now you can see we are able to drag this bar but this radial gradient you can see is still here so we need to make sure that we move this along with our bar so let's add the javascript to fix this thing now in the first part of the video we had defined this variable on our root that is cursor x so we will update this value based on uh, the left position of the current element that is our bar so i will call document dot document element and then style and the set property function i will call and the property is cursor x and i will set the value of this property equal to our element dot style dot left so i will just copy that part here and there should be a comma not full stop now let's save this one and have a look so now you can see the radial gradient is also moving along with, along with our bar so we are getting this cool effect now let's add some more code to fix our hidden text so for that what i'm going to do is define a new function and i will call this function set opacity so here we will call that function set opacity and the parameter that this function will take is this element dot offset left so this will tells us tell us by how many pixel we have moved the bar and based on that we will calculate the distance from our hidden text to that bar so inside this function function set opacity the parameter that we get is the offset so first uh, what i will do is loop through all the elements of my hidden now inside this loop what we are going to do is calculate the distance between the text and the bar that we are dragging around so as we move the bar we will get the updated offset and we will subtract it by our hidden text offset to calculate the difference between the distance so let me add some console so that you can properly see what values we are operating with so just for the demonstration purpose i am adding this console so distance for text hidden text at i index and inner html and the value that i am going to log is the difference between the offset and then the hidden text at the i index offset left so this will gives us the difference between the bar offset and the current text offset so let's open my console tab here now as i drag this you will be able to see all these values getting console so you can see right now the distance we are getting here so for h it is if we hover on top of h you can see that the pixel value that we are getting is 6 similarly for d you can see it is getting closer so now we are getting how far or how near we are to the bar and based on that we will calculate the opacity so for calculating the opacity what i will do is use the same difference value that i have logged so i will create a new variable and call this op for opacity and i will use math.absolute function to get an absolute value and then pass this one and the next thing that i will do is divide this value by 500 now why this 500 i will explain let's console those log this opacity value so that you can see what opacity we are getting so now as you can see if we go on top of h we are getting values closer to this 0 so dividing this 500 because we want to get value between 0 and 1 so for h you can see now we are getting close to 0, 0.0 so now let's set this opacity to our current element so hidden text at the i index and style dot opacity i will set it to op but now the problem is as you go closer you can see it is getting disappearing so it is happening opposite of what we want because at h now we are getting 0.0, .0 and the farther elements the opacity is increasing so for that what i will do is subtract this by 1 
so this will just reverse everything and now as you can see when we drag this around we are having this cool effect so now on top of the edge you can see we are getting value around 0 0.9 now as you can see for the first time page loads we don't want to show this so what we, i will do is simply call this function set opacity so here i will call set opacity and the parameter will be zero so now the page loads for the first time it shouldn't be there and as we drag this it should be revealed so that's all from the javascript part and now for this value 500 if you change it to suppose 100 then we will have some interesting results so now you can see on getting much closer we are having this effect so you can play around with these values to achieve different effects so i think 500 gives us the most appropriate value to have this effect so that's it and that's all the javascript that we require for this tutorial and one more thing that i'm going to add is in my css to make it a little responsive so let me just quickly copy that code so in the bottom of my scss file i'm going to add this media query so basically i am removing the padding and aligning the text to the center of the screen so now on the smaller display it should look fine i think it didn't get applied because i didn't start it to watch the sas so now the styling should be there yeah you can see now it is centered and we can still drag this around so it looks fine or smaller display devices as well so that's it guys for this video i hope you will like this video and if you like this video then don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and also please subscribe to my channel and i will see you in the next tutorial thanks for watching